Paddling TV is brought to you by Ex Officio and their Soul Cool collection of shirts, which not only wick moisture from the body and dry quickly, but are made with ice fill technology. Ex Officio's Soul Cool shirts actually dissipate heat and provide a cooling effect. Check them out at exofficio.com. Paddleboards come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, but choosing the right board doesn't need to be an overwhelming decision. The first thing to know is that there are three basic types of stand-up paddle boards. Surf specific models, all around boards, and touring or race boards. Surf specific stand-up paddle boards are typically shorter, narrower, and have a narrower nose and tail than all around and touring or racing boards. These boards are great if you're gonna spend all of your time in the surf zone. However, the trade-off for that narrower board is that they're gonna be much less stable. All around boards are typically thicker, wider, and longer than surf specific models. These are the most versatile types of stand up paddle boards. They're great in all kinds of conditions. You can take them out and surf them in the surf zone, but they also are typically really, really good for flat water paddling. Touring boards are longer and typically have a pointy nose and are designed specifically for flat water paddling. These boards are great if you know you're gonna spend your time cruising around on your lake, river, or even open ocean touring. A version of a touring board is a race board. Race boards are just like touring boards, but they're much narrower. A race board is going to be much more difficult to stand on, so that's more of an advanced board. Touring boards are typically quite stable, so they are really good for beginners. Once you've established the type of board that fits the type of paddling you plan to do, there are a few other considerations that will help pinpoint what board is right for you. Most importantly is your size in relation to the board and the volume is a great way to think about the board size. There's a certain amount of volume inside every board. Of course, the longer, wider, and thicker a board is, the more volume it's gonna have. Having more volume is great because it means it's gonna float you better. However, it's gonna make the board less responsive. Your challenge is to pick a board with an appropriate amount of volume for your body weight and for your style of paddling. In addition to volume, Width is one of the most important aspects of a board to consider. You're gonna need a board with a certain amount of volume, but also that's wide enough for you to be stable on and comfortable on when you're out on the water. Now that we've taken a look at the styles of boards as well as sizes of boards, let's talk quickly about construction and materials. The construction of board and the materials used determine price, weight, durability, as well as performance. Taking all these things into consideration, you really should be able to narrow down your board selection. But no amount of research can compare to taking a board out for a test drive. So be sure to check with your local outdoor store or surf shop to see if they have demo boards available. Even better, see if they have any on-water demos planned where you can try and test many different boards all at the same time and in the same conditions.